No one has ever known me as fully as you. I'm happy now in another relationship, and that doesn't take anything away from memories of you, and you don't take anything away from this relationship. But I've never been so seen as with you. I don't know how to find that intimacy again, or if it can be found with someone else. I know I wasn't getting everything I needed from you, and it was the right choice to make, but you were my best friend too, and I didn't want to lose everything about the one person I could be myself around. I didn't know intimacy could feel like letting out my real laugh or having someone to consistently eat with, but it built over time, and now I can't get it back. I felt intimacy when I experienced quality time and deep, honest conversations with people I feel close to. I have felt that with my boyfriend, my roommate, and my aunt most recently. I love hugs and cuddling too. I do think emotional intimacy can be hard to express because of the fear of really being known. And the other person not liking what they see and or not reciprocating the vulnerability. But boy, does it feel nice to truly be known. I think I have experienced this difficulty the most in college, and my being nervous to get close to someone has hampered my close friend making. I have many friends, but only few that I feel truly know me. I also am scared of getting to know someone on a deep level. Because it feels like there's no going back after that. And what if I realize I don't want to spend as much time with them as they want to spend with me? Or vice versa? That scares me a lot. But overall, I think intimacy is extremely important for emotional and personal growth and contentment. My name is Emma, and this will be a little video about the project I've been working on for the past seven months or so, titled Crowdsourcing Collegiate Intimacy. Through this project, I sought to expand our understanding of intimate relationships amongst college students and challenge the limiting narrative of hookup culture and casual sex as ways to understand intimacy in college. To look at intimacy in more depth, I drew on college students' natural affinity for online expression to ask questions about their experiences with and impressions of intimacy in their own lives, and I heard from over 50 current college students, two of which you have actually already heard their responses from in the beginning of the video. So far, I have found that intimacy is not only prevalent, but it's complex, complicated, and impactful. I was drawn to this topic based on my own positionality as a college student and always finding conversations around this topic as such a great way to connect with people and learn more about others and myself. To understand the context of the subject at hand, I did have to do some research on my own about what intimacy even means. It's pretty easy to hear the term and have a general sense of its meaning, but in actuality, it's a really broad term. Intimacy is a social concept, varying by culture and region, that involves a wide variety of practices, not only achieved just through the process of self-disclosure. Lynn Jamison, who's a professor at the University of Edinburgh, lists some of these practices as giving to, sharing with, spending time with, knowing, caring for, feeling attachment to, and expressing affection for. Jameson also notes that physical contact and closeness may be a part of intimacy, but they're not mutually exclusive. In addition to defining intimacy, I also researched the history of hookup culture and how it's been conceptualized. One academic broadly defines hookups as sexual behavior that occurs outside the context of committed relationships, to be contrasted with romantic relationships that are characterized by their greater duration, commitment, and emotional intimacy. One study I came across during my research actually highlights how hookups are in fact often experienced with acquaintances as opposed to complete strangers, and that many that engage in hookups actually hope for some sort of commitment from the other person, be it a romantic relationship, casual communication after the hookup, or even just another hookup later on. So from the term hookup comes a concept of hookup culture, which is defined by Lisa Wade, who's a professor at Tulane University, as environments that facilitate presumed one-time sexual encounters with no acknowledged romantic intent. As many have probably experienced, there is a common narrative through mainstream media, and therefore our culture in general, about how common hooking up in college is. 
But even academia reflects this narrative with pronounced information and studies about sex and hooking up alongside a dearth of information about other intimate forms like emotional or platonic intimacy. This project doesn't aim to diminish the importance and normalization of studying sex in young adulthood and in college campuses, but it's only to suggest that the literature be more widely encompassing of more types of intimacy. So we've heard of all these narratives, but why? In addition to psychological theory that defines the developmental task of 19 to 4 year olds as a time of exploration and searching for intimate relationships to avoid isolation, and social movements in the 60s and 70s to push for the normalization of non-marital and premarital sex, there is also significant historical and sociological work that suggests that the creation of young adulthood as a new life stage is a major cause for the rise in hookup culture and casual sex in college. So alongside cultural attitudes towards sex shifting and becoming less taboo, the economic demands of young people today have forced many to delay marriage and childbearing in order to attend higher levels of education, build a career, feel more secure in one's self-identity, and more, which were not really common behaviors allotted to most people before Gen X. However, these intimacy needs and desires, as described by psychological theory, don't just go away due to changing cultural norms and economic demands. So young people may be using casual sex and hookup culture to satisfy these intimacy needs while still staying on track with larger life plans by delaying the settling down process. So why is this important? Well, intimacy is a human need and individuals in both serious and casual relationships desire the affection found through intimate relationships. Long-term happiness and well-being are tied to close intimate relationships regardless of the platonic, sexual, or romantic nature of that intimacy. Challenging and reconstructing the current narratives about college relationships to include more forms of intimacy has the potential to affect college students' expectations and behavior for their own relationships. In addition, Lisa Wade writes that many students experience dissatisfaction of many forms of hookup culture and that it has many downfalls for people. This project's ability to challenge the limiting narrative of hookup culture and casual sex as ways to understand intimate relationships for college students works to increase well-being for this demographic and expand perceptions of intimacy for college students. To conduct this pilot study, I created a website where individuals could submit anonymous written responses about their experiences and perceptions of intimacy in college. I collected data through our website because it increased accessibility for students with smartphone or computer access, was easily shareable through social media, maintained anonymity, which was important for my project to encourage participation, and it was a safe way to collect data from people during the COVID-19 pandemic. The submission prompt on the website was vague and broad, allowing participants to both define intimacy on their own terms and feel welcome to write about experiences that felt intimate to them. For my sample collection, my outreach methods were limited to communities and individuals that I had access to on my own due to my positionality as an undergraduate student. Through my personal and the project's own social media, personal connections, and several programs, professors, and organizations on UW's campus, I advertised my project to gain as many responses as possible. This method of network and convenient sampling definitely has limitation considerations that prevent me from expanding my findings to a general population of college students, but it was the most attainable method for me to use for this study. Though it was tempting to just admire and appreciate the stories told, I did need to go through a process of analysis to draw out patterns and themes amongst the stories to make this a research project. My narrative analysis included many rounds of familiarization with the data, reading and rereading people's submissions and taking initial notes. Once I began noticing certain patterns that related to my question and hypothesis, I created an Excel sheet to organize my coding work. Based on my initial findings, I went through my data and coded for patterns I noticed, such as self-intimacy, vulnerability, closeness, sex, and friendship. I continued this process for more nuanced codes, breaking down larger patterns into more specific ones, like uncertainty, love, romantic versus casual sex, and more. 
I intentionally created groups of submissions that each demonstrate a particular theme in nuanced ways from one another to show the complexity of each theme. In the two or so months I collected data, I received 59 anonymous responses from college students. In terms of the straw man of my pilot study, which is hookup culture and casual sex in college, um, though nearly half of my responses mention sex, most of them talk about how it's not just sex that makes it relate to intimacy, it's the specific things about it, like what happens after sex or the feelings felt. The most prominent themes I've noticed that work to expand our understanding of intimacy for this demographic are self-intimacy, romance, uncertainty and mismatched desires, closeness and connection, and friendship. Love was also mentioned in 24 responses, which was a high number, but was typically mentioned within the context of the other themes I already talked about. One of the most interesting and unexpected themes for me was the idea of self-intimacy. This was featured in responses, often in reference to growth and learning from intimate experiences with other people, but it was also talked about in reference to self-love fostered as one respondent transitioned genders. Quote, ever since my transition, intimacy has taken on a new meaning to loving myself and my body in its purest form. Intimacy means to me that my body is my home. My body, my home is sacred to me, end quote. For others, it entailed confronting their own thoughts and own life, spending time alone and getting to know oneself. As one respondent said, quote, this intimacy has blossomed into a new relationship with myself, one where I'm working on fully allowing myself to be however I am and not trying to change that or suppress that. Another theme that surprised me to see so frequently was that of uncertainty or a mismatch in intimate desires that people felt in college. There was a lot of this within romantic relationships, for example, being content in a long-term relationship during college, but not knowing how the relationship will move forward due to different needs or paths that each individual has planned for post-grad. Another response says, a real intimate partnership is what I want. College is weird. It's a place to hook up. I have never been pursued by anyone for anything more than sex. It hurts. Am I not wanted? This response encapsulates a frequent sentiment amongst the data about the mismatch between experiencing the culture of casual sex and hookup culture on campus, yet wanting more closeness and intimacy, which aligns with previous research that I mentioned before by Lisa Wade, how many college students feel disappointment and dissatisfaction with hookup culture. Lastly, even though I expected some responses to include it, friendship came up as a popular pattern throughout my data, with 21 responses highlighting platonic intimacy and the closeness and trust found within those relationships. A couple of examples include, quote, I found bodily intimacy during my freshman year of college, but emotional intimacy is much more valuable to me. My friendships that have lasted the test of time and character are those in which I can freely express myself without fear of rejection. Another response talks about learning to support and share in emotional experiences with friends and learning to open up emotionally as well. They say, quote, the depth that has been added to these already meaningful relationships with this new embrace of my emotions has opened up a whole new path of connection between me and the people I love most. Others that bring up platonic intimacy also talk about this sense of emotional connection, but also belonging, warmth, and the importance of the support system that good friendships bring. Romance and closeness or connection, the other two patterns highlighted amongst 35 and 26 participants respectively, also undoubtedly work to expand our understandings of intimacy in college, in addition to the three themes I have briefly detailed just now. Each theme demonstrates the extreme nuance of intimate relationships, particularly within the lives of undergraduate students. However, they all come together to create incredible insight to how we can broaden our methods of understanding intimate relationships for college students beyond, yet without ignoring hookup culture and casual sex. As demonstrated in numerous responses, hookup culture is undoubtedly a prominent perception of intimacy for this demographic, but this pilot study has demonstrated the incomplete nature of this narrative for understanding intimacy in college through the notable patterns of self-intimacy, closeness and connection, uncertainty, romance, and friendship. Even though I expected 
a certain level of complexity to the responses, I did not realize how moved I would be to read some people's experiences and just how much nuance there is in both experiences and perceptions of the concept for my peers in college. Despite the undeniable learning curve that I experienced with managing my own research project over the course of nearly nine months, I feel so thankful for the experience and truly have learned so much, both in regards to research as a task in of itself and of course about intimacy.